The Rift recently added a new Slayer boss, the Rift Stalker Blood Fiend, and its highest tier is already notorious for being incredibly difficult, mainly because it's constantly lagging, so I'm going to kill it to prove that even someone as garbage as me can beat the most difficult bosses. To start, I first had to venture to the Stilgore Chateau. <laughs> Fun fact, a chateau is a manor usually reserved for a lord, without fortification, but this is a castle with fortification, a bunch of vampires, and it's in complete ruin, so why they named it that way, I do not know. Regardless, the first thing we need to do is kill some vampires to get their melons. They do idiot watermelons, the fruit. Jesus Christ. I don't really know why the vampires have watermelons. I tried researching it and all I found was this one really short Wikipedia page, so your guess is as good as mine, honestly. Regardless, we only needed 12 of them to make this, a healing melon. We need this because all vampires, including the boss, do heart damage, and because there's no natural regeneration in the rift, the only way to heal is by eating watermelon for some reason. Anyways, after getting a healing melon, I talked to Maddox to start a tier 1 quest and got back to slaying vampires. Tier 1s are pretty easy if you know what you're doing. The boss does a flat half heart of damage every second, which is why having a healing melon matters so much. And on top of that, he goes into mania at half health. During this phase, the boss spawns a circle around itself with a green ring inside. If you're in that ring when the ground turns into redstone, you'll be okay, but if you aren't, you'll take two hearts of damage. After killing my first boss, I got some coven seals, which are used in every vampire slayer recipe, and I could use them to get a lot of good upgrades, but I needed vampire slayer level 1 to unlock the recipe, so I had to go do another boss. But after that, I got to level 1 and decided to make a silver laced karambit. Not only would it increase my damage to vampires, but it also gives me an extra half heart every time I hit an enemy, which is super good for healing. After making it though, I didn't have any coven seals left because tier 1 bosses don't drop very many, so with my increased damage and better healing, I decided to take on a tier 2 rift stalker blood fiend. This tier is much harder than the first tier, adding two new abilities that can be pretty challenging. Tier 2s deal one heart of damage every second as opposed to half a heart, and now also have the twin claws ability. When the boss uses his attack, he shoots two claws, one in front of him and one behind. If you get hit by one of them, you take three hearts of damage. You'll know the attack is about to be used if you hear this. On top of that, after his mania phase, the boss now uses Stone Wrath, where he summons three clock lights, which reduce your maximum health with their alive. A bit after that, he flies into the air and targets you, locking on after two seconds. He then shoots towards you and destroys any clock light graves in range. A good strategy for this phase is to make the boss target you while you're standing on the dead clock lights, otherwise he'll revive them and then you'll have to fight six instead of just three. But even with all of that, I still managed to beat the boss and get a decent amount of coven seals. With the seals I got, I decided to make Holy Ice, which reduces the damage you take by 80% for 1.5 seconds. This is helpful to use on Twin Claws because of its beefy damage, turning a 3 heart hit into just half a heart. To craft it, I also needed to get 100 frozen water, isn't, isn't that just... Isn't that ice? It's found in the living stillness. After crafting it though, I was out of seals, so I killed a few more bosses to get the remaining seals for some upgrades. In the process, I managed to get Vampire Slayer level 2, which unlocked even more upgrades that I could make. I ended up crafting three items, the first being the Anti-Bite Scarf, which reduces the damage you take by 0.3 hearts per hit. To make it, I had to upgrade my helmet to the Detransfigured Face, which I should have done already, but honestly, I just didn't want to because the helmet's ugly, okay? The helmet, it's, it's just ugly. After that, I upgraded my Healing Melon to a Juicy Healing Melon, which kills me for 9 hearts as opposed to 7. Finally, I crafted the Steak Steak. Again, a weird choice of name because it's not a steak, it's mutton. It should be the mutton steak, but regardless, it's useful because it can kill any vampire instantly, including the boss, once it reaches 20% of its max health. With all my new gear, I figured I was probably ready to try and take on a tier 3 Rift Stalker Blood Fiend. This tier adds two new abilities to the mix. The first one starts in his mania phase, where you now have to complete actions like sneaking, jumping, or clicking a certain direction, or you take 4 hearts of damage. Another thing is the general increase damage of his attacks. Holy Ice is really helpful on this tier because Twin Claws now does 5 hearts of damage, which is almost half my health. With the Holy Ice ability though, that damage is reduced to just 1 heart. In his final phase, the second new ability shows up, where the boss casts a large spring of candles nearby. To destroy it, you have to spam left and right click on it, but if you don't break it within 15 seconds, you die instantly. 
An issue I had with this ability is that the stone wrath bubbles are considered entities, which means that they blocked my clicks, making me unable to break the spring and thus failing the boss. I decided to try again, but this time I broke the candles as soon as I saw them spawn in, and because of that I managed to kill the boss. I ended up doing a few more tier 3s afterwards because I had all the upgrades I could get but didn't have enough Slayer XP to unlock anything new. After doing some more bosses I ended up getting to Vampire Slayer level 3 which unlocked 3 new upgrades as well as Blood Badges which are the upgraded version of Coven Seals. To craft them I need a lot of materials, Leech Supreme fragments I could easily get from, you guessed it, Leech Supreme and Bakke fragments from Bakte. Crux Motions are also interesting as I need one of every Crux type to craft one so they're very tedious to get, not to mention you need 2 per Blood Badge. But it was avoidable as I needed them to upgrade my gear to do tier 4 so I went and grabbed the materials to make a bunch. After getting all the materials to make them I realized that I needed one stack of coven seals per blood badge and I barely even had two. My plans for getting every single upgrade available were put on hold for a little bit but I could still make leggings of the coven which only require one blood badge. The last thing I needed to get were some leggings of the pack which are a Sven Slayer item but the leggings are rift transferable meaning I could visit Cyrus's house in the overworld and transfer them back across to myself in the rift. After crafting my new leggings I instantly set them to the color blood black, because for some reason everyone in the game collectively decided that that's the color we would pick for the damage bonus. After that I went out to gather all of the enigma souls I've not found yet because upgrading your cloak gives you mana regeneration. I also got the rest of the Montezuma fragments I didn't have yet for the same reason. After that I was out of stuff to upgrade so I decided to try and fight a tier 4. This tier doesn't have any new abilities and instead takes what's already there and makes it way more intense. Every attack other than his passive life drain is buffed and his impel ability is now active during the entire fight instead of just the two mania phases. On top of that you only have two seconds to complete them rather than two and a half. Because of how precise the timings are, this tier is really difficult, which is why I spent so much time getting better gear and mana regeneration. Luckily I have good ping and at the time was playing Calamity Infernum, so I was pretty used to hard bosses and precise timing, so I did the boss on my first try. I wanted to go right into some tier 5s, but I knew it wouldn't end well because I didn't have all the right gear, but to get that gear I would need Vampire Slayer level 5, so I had to go and do 20 more tier 4s. After a couple hours I had level 5 and a ton of coven seals, and was ready to grind all the new gear I needed to get. The first thing I did was upgrade my sword to a silver twist karambit for the extra damage and mana, but it required a stack of silver fangs so I had to go get those from the overworld. I could also upgrade my anti-bite scarf to mythic, giving it more damage reduction and mana. To craft it though, I had to go transfer scarf studies to myself from the overworld. The biggest upgrade I made was the lively sepulcher chestplate, which gave me an extra heart, more mana region, and more intelligence. The crafting recipe for this is one of the most expensive in the rift, requiring a stack of living hearts, 12 blood badges, and 24 berberbus bunches, but it was totally worth making. Lastly I made the vampiric time charm. I didn't really want to at first because the mountaintop isn't out so you know what was it going to do but it turns out it upgrades your rift necklace when you put it in your gallery to give you plus one heart and even more rift time. With all my new gear I was feeling pretty confident so I decided it was finally time to take on a tier 5 rift stalker blood fiend. This tier adds one new ability the blood icor. The boss places it randomly around himself and while it's up his life drain passive does an extra half heart of damage from one and a half hearts to two and if it's up for 30 seconds it'll explode and instantly kill you. To break it, you just have to get the boss to shoot Twin Claws at it. The rest of his attacks only got a small buff, but there are just so many different things he can do that it can be hard to keep track of everything at one time. My first attempt unsurprisingly didn't go very well, and most future attempts just ended about like this. For this... For this... Or like this... Or you get the idea. My biggest problem was that the boss's impel ability now instantly kills you unless you get lucky and ice it, which meant that a little bit of lag could ruin the entire fight. The only thing left I could do was upgrade my healing melon because I forgot to earlier, but other than that I just had to keep trying and hope to get better. After about 10 attempts I ended up killing my first tier 5. A few attempts after that I killed my second and then my third and eventually got pretty consistent at it. After about my 15th kill I wanted to check what position I was on the leaderboard, and because the rift was pretty new at the time I was doing good so I figured why not try and go for number 1. After a few days I managed to get number 1 with about 20,000 XP but since then I've dropped to not even be top 100 and I couldn't get a screenshot because the in-game leaderboard doesn't work so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Sources that I made it the fuck up. In total I made about 300 mil from two unfanged vampire parts, a legendary book bundle, and all the motes I got from various other drops were enough to buy dead cat food from Barrier Street. But that's about it, like if you like, dislike if you don't, enjoy this space PNG.